sweet spirit, sweet spirit, take over this place, take over this place, sweet spirit, sweet spirit, take over this place, take over this place. Spirit, Holy Spirit, take over this place, take over this place. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, take over this place, take over this place. Mighty Spirit. Mighty Spirit, take over this place, take over this place. Mighty Spirit, Mighty Spirit, take over this place, take over this place. Take over, take over, take over, take over this place. Take over, take over, take over this place. I believe we are always looking for guidance because everyone is our teacher. And I know that as we move through each day, it's a good idea to kind of slow down, take inventory, see what's going on, become still relaxed and listen what is the guidance for today i believe it is just again to slow down we move way too fast way too fast and we don't take time to listen to the messages that are always flowing to us when we slow down we take a good breath and just relax and just listen. Everything happening is trying to get our attention and for us to just lighten up. We have been through so much over these 18 months. And just when we thought things were going to begin to open up even more, and now we've been hit with something else. I like to pay attention to the positive voices in my head because I know they're always guiding me to do the right thing. That means I slow down and just enjoy life. And I set aside time to pay attention to everything that is going on so that I know what is my next step. It could be a step in helping me to write my talk, taking better care of myself, making those phone calls to friends and family. Could be any numbers of things, but if we're going at 100 miles an hour and we don't take time to slow down, it becomes difficult. It becomes very difficult. So I just slow down. And then when I slow down, sometimes I go into YouTube and listen to comedians. And when I can laugh throughout the day, I feel so much lighter and better because I'm clearing out all the other stuff that I don't want to think about. And when we get messages from spirit, it's not always in the same way. I have noticed over these last six to eight months that even some of the commercials that are on TV can be very inspiring from time to time. And I write those things down because I know that I can use them at another time. There are days that I get messages from Dr. Michael Beckwith. And the one I got the other day, I thought was so appropriate. We have to wake up and trust that everything is as it should be. 
not what we think it should be. Everything is unfolding perfectly according to our own conscious connection with the presence and love of God. We are asking ourselves to trust God. And when we can do that, we know that we are on the right track. When we can listen, I know that I'm on a higher frequency by staying tender to myself, by listening to the messages, and even with laughter, which expands our hearts and tunes up the frequency of the day. I believe the deep yearning of our heart's desire is always open and just waiting for those messages. Do we really pay attention to what's going on to our bodies? What our body is yearning for? Loving what loves us helps us to give up what we think we know. And we start with a clean slate every day. You know, I know that we have so many things going on and we still live in the past. We try to bring the past into the next day and then we're frustrated and worried and stressed. So when we go to bed, we let go of those things and we start every morning with a clean slate. Abraham said, the only way for anyone to be consistently happy is to understand that the feeling of happiness is simply about alignment with the source within. When we can align with the source within, we are getting messages that everything's going to be okay. Every morning when we wake up, we have infinite possibilities in our life. We're not limited, not one bit. Again, we release the past and look at what is coming towards us and feel joy and happiness. We feel success. We feel excited. It's a new day. And when we wake up and we say joy is waking me up in the morning, then we know we have hit the mark. And we know that we are always doing our best, whatever we do. Ernest Holmes says, the attitude we should take is that life holds nothing against us. It, it, its desire is only our good. It wants us to play the game of life the way it is supposed to be played. And that means in unity and cooperation with others. That's all we need to do is be in cooperation with others, listen to each others, to each other, exchange information. And whether you agree or not, you can always say, that sounds interesting. That sounds interesting. I know that each day is a special day. And I believe with fearless faith that we just remember the days when we were all working. Remember those days? And we would sleep as long as possible. We would hit the, the, um, the button as long as we could. And then when we couldn't, after the 10th time, we jump up, run to the shower, get dressed, make coffee, grab the keys, get in the car, to sit in traffic. And by the time we got to work, we'd walk in, we would stumble into the door and we would either find our office or a chair or something and we would just collapse. We would just collapse. Do you remember those days? And one of the things as you were lying back trying to gather yourself, and say, I'll be so happy when I can retire and I can let go so I can do the things I really wanna do. Well, we are now, a lot of us. What are we doing with that time that we wished we had and we had so many things we wanted to do? 
maybe the first part of COVID, we did that for the first maybe 12 months. And then it started getting on our last nerves and we wanted to do something else. Remember those days? And it was always, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. Now you said that when you were at work and now that you're home, I don't have enough time. Well, my friends, we have 168 hours in every week. We get to choose what we want to do and how we want to use it. We always have enough time. So slow down people, enjoy life. Bring more joy into the lives every day. It makes our hearts happy and we function so much better when we are joyful. The deep yearning of our heart's desire is to open and come out and play. So what is joy? Well, in one of the Bibles, the New Living Translation, there are over 50 references to what is joy. I think we can be more joyful because it was built into us. We can't get rid of it unless we want to. So it's right here within us. And there's no excuse not to find joy somewhere in some part of a day. Find something to laugh at every day. Set aside about 15 to 30 minutes. Go into YouTube. Go to Clean Comedians and just laugh. There are so many. And there have been days where I said, okay, I'm going to take my 15 minutes. I'm going to go in. I'm going to laugh. And then I'm going to get back to work. Next thing I know, tears are falling down my face. My stomach hurts because I've been laughing for an hour. But I feel so much got better because my vibration has increased and I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm laughing and all things come to me with ease and joy. And that's what makes me happy and able to get through the day. The doctors have said that when we laugh, it vibrates every fiber in our being to make it healthy and strong and joy-filled and excited. And God smiles. I believe God smiles. And how do we know God smiles? We've got blue skies. We've got a bright sun. We can see the stars at night with a beautiful moon. I think that's God's way of being with us all the time. Uh, Alan Cohen says, when you reframe problems as projects, they will cease to bother you and begin to stimulate you. Have you ever thought about that? When you come up with a problem and make a project out of it, it stimulates you in a whole new way of excitement and creativity and more information flows to you that you don't have to sit and knock your head against a wall trying to figure out, oh my goodness, what do I do next? It can be fun. It can be joyous. It can be exciting. Today, I can make my time a lot smoother because perhaps we have laughters. We have laughter and we can get rid of that. We can chase it away so easily. I think the older people complain about laughing. That's silly. That's for kids. That's really stupid. It's a waste of time. I don't have time to laugh. I don't have time to do those things. Well, I'll tell you, my great aunt is 106. She lives in Palo Alto. And she's laughing all the time. When I'm with her, when I call her, we just laugh. We have a good time. She tells jokes. She talks about me when I was a child and some of the things that I did. She's planning her 107th birthday next February. I believe she's going to make it because she wants it. She wants it. And I think that, you know, the Bible even reminds us 
to be as little children again. I love the commercials on TV where this little girl put hopscotch in her walk. And a lot of people that are walking down the street, they stop and they jump. I can't remember even how to do that anymore, but they jump and they have a smile on their face. Even the postman who was just a grouchy old dude and he started doing it and he would smile. So I think that's what God wants us to do is to have fun, to lighten up, to feel the presence, to just let go. <sighs> having, joy in, having joy includes feeling good and knowing that vibrant happiness can keep you going through whatever is going on in your life. We are inspired. We are inspired. And let's enjoy our life. Let's have more fun. Let's call people and play games over the computer. There's any number of things we can do to make our life so much better so that we're not getting sick. We're not having mass headaches. We're just having fun because we're lightening up we're doing the best that we can to stay healthy and strong. And, you know, call somebody. Say, let's laugh for a while. Have you found any good jokes? Or let's play a game. Whatever it is, because we don't have to do this by itself. I have a story I would like to share with you. And it's about slowing down. I have had insomnia for years. I've been tested and all kinds of things. And now I'm in a, a group at Stanford. It's an eight week group project where you keep track of your sleep. You go to sleep at the same time, you wake up at the same time to get the circadian rhythms in your mind back in alignment so that you can sleep with ease. And I've been doing this now for six weeks. We've got two more weeks to go. But at the appointment on the meeting on Thursday, they showed a slide with a stream of water moving through. There was a leaf, a leaf sitting right there. And there was a rock on the leaf. And the thought is, if we can't go to sleep, use our imagination to see this stream floating by the side of our bed or wherever you want it to float. You see a leaf there and whatever is disturbing you, remove it from your mind and put it on the leaf and watch it just float away. And I thought, wow, that is so soothing. And then I began to think, there's been times when I can't meditate or pray because there's too much noise in my head. I can do that same thing. I can use my imagination. I can see the water flowing. I can see the leaf and I can see me remove that problem or whatever it is and put it on that leaf and watch it go away. And when I can do that, then I can go into the silence and meditate because it becomes easier because I'm getting the things out of my head and letting it float away on the water. Slow down to meditate, pray and to sleep. I am sleeping so much better now, most of the time, than I have ever in a long time. But just imagine how we can make changes to things that are happening in our life by using our imagination, seeing that stream and that, that leaf and our issues moving forward. But you know what? It's not just for problems. If there's something really exciting that you want to do, 
we can use our imagination, see that water going by, put our dreams and hopes on that leaf, go into the silence and then see what happens. See what happens. It can make a huge difference because you don't have to think about it all by yourself. You don't have to think about it. It's going out into the atmosphere and it's awesome. So I want you to know that Myr Myrtle Fillmore says, that which the world has to give does not satisfy. But when we go into the secret place, when we learn to be still and know the I am God's perfect idea of us, we lack nothing. We lack nothing. So take a deep breath in. Our prayer can be, help me to be gentle with myself, always in all ways. Guide me to greater peace and love for myself so I can send that light to others. God's always got us, especially when we are gentle with ourselves. And so it is. I will be gentle with myself. I will be gentle with myself. And I will hold myself like a newborn baby child. I will be gentle with myself. I will be gentle with myself. And I will hold myself like a newborn baby child. I will be tender with my heart. I will be tender with my heart. And I will hold my heart like a newborn baby child. I will be tender with my heart. I will tender with my heart and I will hold my heart like a newborn baby child and I will only go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go I will only go as the slowest part of me feels safe to go I will be easy on myself I will be easy on myself And I love myself like a newborn baby child I will be easy on myself I will be easy on myself And I love myself like a baby child With each breath you take, breathe in peace. Breathe out any stress you might be holding in your body. And just continue to breathe. As you breathe, you begin to release the busyness of this day and relaxing more and more 
into the peace, calm, and quiet of this present moment. Find that place of calm within you. If you find stressful thoughts persisting, gently bless them and send them along their way. Allow them to move on. Open your heart. This is where all the love, wisdom, and peace reside. Whatever challenge or difficulty you might be experiencing, or maybe all is well in your world and you feel at peace, allow this to come into your consciousness, into your awareness. Feel that you are surrounded and folded in a warm, loving embrace, supporting your every need as you enter into the silence now. slowly return to this time and place. Continue to breathe easily. Notice how you feel within and without. And just rest in that feeling. We express a deep, profound gratitude for this gift of meditation, the silence, and for the wisdom and knowledge revealed to us during this time, which is ours alone to claim. And so it is. Oh.